This is Basid McLean, the 23-year-old whose murder case shocked the entire world. In February of 2013, New Yorkers were horrified to discover the dismembered remains of a woman scattered in garbage bags across multiple locations in the Bronx. The first set of remains were discovered by a dog walker, whose dog was attracted to the scent of meat emanating from one of the bags. When the dog's owner went to investigate, he came across the dismembered remains and immediately called police. The dismembered body would be identified as 45-year-old Tanya Bird, a home health aide. She had been dismembered and then stuffed inside heavy-duty garbage bags, which had then been stuffed inside duffel bags and dumped in a number of locations in the Bronx. One contained an arm and a leg, another contained a portion of torso and shoulders while the final contained a head. Her autopsy would conclude that she had been stabbed in the neck. Police immediately started investigation and found out the victim was brutally murdered by her own son. According to the criminal complaint, Basid had stabbed his mother to death and then cut up her body with the assistance of another man. This second man would be identified as Basid's friend, 26-year-old William Harris. He too was arrested on charges of unlawfully dissecting a human body and hindering prosecution. According to those who knew the family, Basid was a very troubled man who had been harboring anger towards his mother for quite some time. His grandfather, James McLean, said that his grandson often did destructive things, such as setting fires, and that they had trouble controlling him. Tanya herself was terrified of her own son. He was on probation after attacking two police officers with a knife back in 2010. She also suspected that he was harming his seven-year-old brother, Nasir, who had Down syndrome. Following Basid's arrest, it would be revealed that he had claimed that William was the one to kill his mother, alleging that he had threatened his life and the life of his younger brother if he didn't help to dispose of her body. He admitted that he had taken part in the dismemberment, revealing he had drained his mother's blood in the bathtub of their apartment and then dismembered her. However, William would state to police that Basid had shown him photographs on his mobile phone of Tanya's body. Basid's mobile phone would be examined and police would find an extremely disturbing photograph. It is a photograph of Basid, posing with his mother's decapitated head. A search warrant for the apartment that Basid shared with his mother and his younger brother. Inside, police would find that the apartment had been scrubbed clean with bleach and the shower curtain was missing from the bathroom. They also found a saw, latex gloves, and a shopping cart, which was believed to transport Tanya's dismembered remains to various locations within the city. A police source would disclose a potential motivation to the brutal murder, stating that Tanya had essentially told Basid to grow up and move out of her apartment. He said, He and another guy are blaming each other. He's constantly changing his story as we find more physical evidence. There's no question he did it. Basid would be ordered to stand trial for the murder of his mother. Defense attorney, Lynn Calvaca, would be putting forward the theory that her client was legally insane at the time of the murder. During opening statements, she held up a photograph of the selfie that Basid had taken with his mother's decapitated head. Does this look like someone who knows what he is doing is wrong? She questioned. She said that Basid had been hearing voices since he was just 10 years old and had been moved through psychiatric hospitals throughout his life. The prosecution, however, would refute this and refer to Basid as cold-blooded. Assistant District Attorney Aaron Kaplan stated that Basid had stabbed Tanya in the beck after she told him that he was a lousy father. He then went to a local hardware store, purchased a two-foot power saw, and then dismembered his mother's body. Basid and Tanya's family supported the prosecution, with Tanya's sister stating, If he could do that to his own mother, imagine what he could do to a stranger. I don't hate him. I pity him. On the first day of trial, the prosecution would present four witnesses. The first to testify would be James Daniels who had stumbled across part of Tanya's body as he was walking his dog. He told the courtroom he had been walking along Eagle Ave and E-158 Saint when his dog started barking and pulling him towards a suitcase that was on the sidewalk. Curious, he opened the suitcase up and found a portion of Tanya's body. He ran around the corner and immediately called 911. Officer Donald Seal, who was the first on the scene, testified that he opened up the suitcase, which smelled strongly of cleaning products, and found Tanya's severed head. Later that morning, Officer Seal was one of the officers to respond to Basid's missing person report. He had called police to report his mother missing. Upon entering the apartment, Officer Seal immediately noticed that it smelled the same as the ominous suitcase. 
He asked Basid to provide a photograph of his mother, and he turned his mobile phone away from him as he searched for a photograph of Tanya. It was this mobile phone that the graphic photographs would later be found on. A video of an interview between police and Basid would be played out during the murder trial. Basid calmly described dismembering his mother's body before stating, If you can kill somebody, you should be able to cut them up too. If you can't do that, if you don't have the stomach to cut them up, then you're a coward. Basid McLean would be found guilty of the murder of Tanya Bird. He was convicted of second-degree murder and unlawful dissection of a human being. He was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison.